Hi everyone, well it's the middle of September and if you're like me, you've spent more of the summer socialising than getting the miles in, so you're probably thinking it's time to dust off the old indoor trainer, get back into it, lose some timber. That's what my autumn's going to be like anyway, I can't wait, really. Anyway, what better time for Wahoo to pop round and drop off not one but two brand new trainers. There's a new top end kicker, the kicker move and a more affordable kicker bike, the kicker bike shift. Both of these are new models to beef up Wahoo's range. They don't replace anything, they're extra. Let's have a look at them both and let's start with the Kicker Move. So the Kicker feels like it's been around for basically the whole lifetime of that based virtual training and it's currently on its sixth iteration. We reviewed it in December on Road CC. There's a link to that popping up now. It's still one of the most popular smart trainers out there. Now, in the past few years, an increasing number of folks have paired their smart trainer with some kind of rocker or movement plate to make the bike feel a bit more dynamic underneath them. It does add something to the experience, but it's not without its problems. The rocker plates can be big and unwieldy and hard to store, and also it can be harder to get on and off the bike because it's higher up and you can't lock out the movement of the plate. On top of that, the pivot point is low down under the wheels, which makes the bike move a bit differently to when you're out on the road. So, enter the Kicker Move. Now, what Wahoo has done here is essentially take the guts of the latest Kicker Trainer and add in a motion system that allows the bike to move forwards and backwards. You get eight inches of uh, four and a half travel along the channel that's flat at the middle and ramps up at either end. This is so the bike feels nice and dynamic when you're cruising around and as you get up to the end of the travel in a sprint or whatever, the ramp makes sure that heavier riders like me don't top out. It's not dissimilar to the way the Saris MP1 platform works, at least in a direction perpendicular to your bike. Now, if you want the bike locked out for when you're getting on and off, or you're doing a session where you'd rather not have the bike move around underneath you, there's a big switch to lock out the mechanism. Side-to-side -side movement is something that Wahoo has already implemented on its kicker trainer with the axis feet, and the kicker move gets those too, albeit they're slightly redesigned, so they offer a bit more side-to-side -side movement. You can adjust the amount of movement, by swapping out the cups on the feet. So those are the changes. And other than that, it's a latest generation kicker. So you get plus or minus 1% accuracy and a maximum resistance of 2,200 watts. The kicker is the first indoor trainer to offer Wi-Fi connectivity and it also has a race mode, which transmits your power to training apps up to 10 times a second for a quicker response when you dart off the front to try and win from the break only to get reeled in 200 meters from the line and end up finishing 50th. Well, that's what happens to me anyway. So for intervals, the kicker also has Wahoo's easy erg mode, which lets you ease yourself back into a session if you have to stop for any reason, like nipping to the loo or coughing up a lung. The other change isn't really to do with the trainer itself. Wahoo has done a lot of work on the unboxing process to make things straightforward as possible. So when you pull the trainer out, there's a QR code to scan and that'll take you to a portal where you answer a few questions about your setup, about the gears you've got and the like, and it guides you through the whole process, which is pretty neat. So that's the kicker move. In the UK, it'll set you back 13 99 Other prices popping up now, so it's more expensive than the kicker, but it's not as much as a kicker and a rocker plate. Okay, onto this, the kicker bike shift. We reviewed the original kicker bike back in 2020, and we really liked it with its clever built-in tilt mechanism for simulating gradient. It's an expensive bit of kit though, at 3499 in the UK, so you're probably thinking, well, they've just been the tilted bit out, and made a cheaper version of the same thing, because that's what I thought. But Wahoo hasn't done that. This is really quite a different beast. Firstly, it uses a different resistance system. So the kicker bike has a motor brake, which can power the flywheel for descents and do clever little clunky pushes to simulate gear changes. The shift doesn't have that. It's a more standard electromagnetic resistance unit like you'd find in most direct drive trainers. So that means you lose a bit of the gear feedback and you can't leave the flywheel spinning on the Alpha Zwift descent while you nip off for a brew, for example. Uh, the resistance unit is new for this bike. It's belt driven from the cranks and it spins more quickly than a geared one normally would. And Wahoo says it's quieter than ever. The kicker bike shift also doesn't get the more expensive bike's digital display, which tells you what gear you're in. So obviously the gears are all virtual and you can set both the chain ring and cassette sizes and the button configuration to whatever you like in the Wahoo app. Some apps will display this info on screen, although Zwift currently doesn't. So you'll need to use the app on your phone as a display or just wing it. Uh, to be honest, it's not much of a miss as the kicker bikes display is pretty ordinary and also in a daft place. So if you added a sweat catcher, you couldn't see it. This shift is a steel frame, which is cheaper than the original bike's aluminium frame and a bit heavier, 
But realistically, once you've muscled it into place, it's neither here nor there. Again, there are five points of adjustment like the bigger bike, so you can get your fit dialed in and the setup page talks you through getting your fit to match your outdoor ride. The stem, bars and seat posts are all standard components. So it's really easy to swap out your contact points if you want like a wider bar or you need a longer seat post. Wahoo says that people from five feet up to six foot four will fit the bike straight out of the box. Like the kicker move, the kicker bike shift is accurate to plus or minus 1% and can offer 2,200 watts of resistance. The Wi-Fi, the Easy Erg mode are baked in and the race mode is coming in a firmware update down the line. At 2699 in the UK, it's considerably cheaper than its bigger brother and will stick the worldwide prices on the screen. So that's Wahoo's new trainers for this autumn. What do you think? Can you see either of these taking pride of place in your pain cave this winter? Let us know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this vid, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more great content from us. We're gonna take these two trainers get some serious miles logged on them, see how they perform. Check out Road CC for a review soon and we'll pin a comment here when it's live. That's all from us for now and see you soon.